Agent Cooper was headed for Byron Bay. Being a surfing enthusiast, he was happy to be going to what has been described as the sexiest beach in the world. Captain Cook anchored there in 1770 and named it Byron Bay to honour Vice Admiral John Byron, sometimes known as Foulweather Jack because of his bad luck with the weather. Admiral Byron claimed the Falkland Islands for Britain and discovered the Tuamotu Islands, Tokalau and the Gilbert Islands. He was grandfather to the English poet Byron. Byron the poet served as a regional leader of a secret Italian revolutionary organisation called the Carbonari, formed in the south of Italy in the early 19th century. The name came from their initiation rituals structured around the trade of charcoal selling. Robbie Louis Stevenson's story The Pavilion on the Links features the Carbonari in the plot. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle mentions them often in his Sherlock Holmes story The Adventure of the Red Circle. Cooper had intended staying in Byron Bay to surf, but it was Easter, the town was crowded with more than 50,000 music fans who had gathered for the annual Byron Bay Blues Festival, but lodgings were impossible to find. Agent Cooper, as well as being an interplanetary investigator, was also an interstellar musician and leader of the Interplanetary Orchestra. They had played at the Byron Bay Festival some years before, but the audience had arrived mistakenly thinking that he was Alice Cooper. After the first few numbers, the audience, realising their mistake, and despite global warning, began to throw plastic bottles full of water, forcing the band to leave the stage and abandon the concert. Cooper hired a car and kept going towards Brunswick Heads, where he rented a caravan for a couple of days. Falling asleep, he heard the road trains roaring past on the Pacific Highway close by, and his dreams seemed to resemble a strange TV transmission from some faraway planet, pictures of past history of the place. He was in a mixed J.G. Ballard-type images, car crashes, similar main names and stuff. It occurred to him that in just over 150 years, virtually all trace of its original inhabitants, the Bunjalung people, had all but disappeared. Strange, he thought. They had lived in this area for 6,000 years before the Europeans arrived. Something catastrophic must have happened to them. 